Section 3.4, Electronic Structure of Atoms. Here, we're going to take our knowledge from the previous section, and we're going to put it to use by looking at the periodic table, and we're going to describe the ground state electron configuration of electrons. So we're going to start with hydrogen. So hydrogen's ground state electron configuration is 1s1. So what these electron configurations do is they tell you where the atoms or where the elements, where their electrons are. So which orbitals are they in? How many electrons do they have in each orbital? So what this means is hydrogen has one electron in the 1s orbital. So here, this is our principal quantum number, n equals one. Here, the s comes from the angular momentum quantum number, l equals zero. And then this superscript right here, or this exponent, describes how many electrons are in that orbital slash subshell. So 1s1 means hydrogen has one electron in the 1s orbital, or in the 1s subshell. So let's look at orbital diagrams. Now, so what's on the left right here, these are the electron configurations, and these are called orbital diagrams. And so orbital diagrams are used where the a box represents an orbital, and electrons are represented with half arrows. Not full arrows, but half arrows. So a half arrow pointing up corresponds to m sub s equals plus one half, and a half arrow pointing down corresponds to m sub s equals negative one half, spin down. Now it's important to note that orbitals, they are arranged in a specific order. They are arranged in order of increasing energy. So this is called the Aufbau principle. So the Aufbau principle states that electron configurations must be filled in uh, using orbital diagrams, starting with the lowest energy orbitals. So electrons go in the lowest energy orbitals first. Whenever you have a choice between a lower energy orbital and a higher energy orbital, choose the lower energy one. So for example, if I was starting with hydrogen, neutral hydrogen just has one electron. So where do I put that one electron? I put it in the lowest energy orbital. So that's why hydrogen's orbital diagram that's looked like that. That's why its electron configuration is 1s1. Now when we go to helium, well hel helium, since it comes second in the periodic table, it has all of the electrons or electron from the elements that came before it plus one more. So helium has two electrons. So helium has that first electron that just like hydrogen does, but now we need to add a second electron. So where do we put that second electron? So if you put that second electron here, that would be incorrect. You need to fill in the lower energy orbitals first. So the second electron goes right here. So that's why, while well, hydrogen's electron configuration was 1s1, helium's electron configuration is 1s2. It has two electrons, two electrons in the 1s orbital or in the 1s subshell. So whenever you have a choice between a lower energy orbital and a higher energy orbital, put the electron in the lower energy orbital. All right, so these are what the orbital energies in a multi-electron atom looks like. I'm not gonna linger on this slide too much, but this is something you can check out if you want and a, a different way of looking at things. I want to talk about these superscripts here. So think about the fact that each orbital, each orbital can hold two electrons in it. So there is a single s orbital in each subshell, which means the max electrons that can fit in an s subshell is two. Two electrons can fit in each s subshell. Now there are three p orbitals in each p subshell, which means we can fit up to six electrons in each p subshell. Five d orbitals, which means 10 electrons in each d subshell, and seven f orbitals, which means 14 electrons in each f subshell. So you need to fill each of the inner subshells to the max, their maximum energy of electrons following the chart above. Now the last subshell may or may not be full. So let's look at some examples here. Now this error diagram is very useful if you're having trouble understanding things. Now at the start, as you fill in these orbitals, as you build up these electron configurations of elements, it's pretty standard, right? We go to 1s, then we go to 2s, then we go to 2p, then 3s, then 3p, 
Now this is where it starts to get a little more complicated. You would think we would go from 3P to 3D, but we actually go to 4S. And so we get this interesting quirk where the 3D orbitals are actually slightly higher in energy than the 4S orbitals are. So the 4S orbitals get filled first, then the 3D orbitals get filled. So let's look at this from the uh, concept of the periodic table. So the first two columns of the periodic table, these represent the S subshells. Now helium technically kind of belongs here, but it's, it's, over, it's all the way over here for a certain reason. So this is our 1s subshell, this is the 2s subshell, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s. So if you've ever looked at the periodic table and wondered, well, why is it shaped like this? Well, you've got these two columns on the left here because these represent the s subshells. So each subshell can fit two electrons, which is why this little block right here is two columns wide. Over here, we've got the p subshells. And so this block right here is six columns wide because each P subshell can fit six electrons. So this would be 2P1, 2P2, 2P3, 2P4, 2P5, 2P6, 3P, 4P, 5P, 6P. You get the idea. So each P subshell can fit six electrons, which is why this, this block here is six columns wide. In the middle, these are the D subshells. So these blocks right here, or this block, is 10 columns wide because each D subshell can fit 10 electrons. So 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, and so on. And then finally, the ones that are a bit unique, you're not gonna see many examples with these. These are the F subshells. These are 14 columns wide because the F subshell can hold 14 electrons. So let's look at some more electron configurations. So it's helpful to have a periodic table up here and follow along with me. So we looked at hydrogen, hydrogen was 1s1. Then we looked at helium, helium was 1s2. Now if we go to the element which has the atomic number three, that's lithium. So neutral lithium has three electrons. So it's got the same first two that helium has, but now lithium has a third electron. So where do we put that third electron? Well, we put it in 2s1. So lithium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. Beryllium is number four, so it's 1s2, 2s2. Now when we get to boron, we've got five electrons, so 1s2, 2s2. Where does that fifth electron go? It goes in a 2p orbital, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So I strongly recommend checking out this table right here and comparing it with the actual periodic table. And this is how you will find your electron configuration. So as you start to understand these ideas, Finding electron configurations is pretty easy. It's basically more or less just counting. You're just counting upward from 1s to 2s to 2p to 3s to 3p to 4s to 3d to 4p and so on. You keep going from there. So you're just counting upwards and you just have to keep in mind that the element, each element contains this final electron plus all of the electrons from the elements that came before it. All right. Now where things start to get a little tricky is when we get to uh, something like carbon, something like nitrogen. So carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now that is its electron configuration, that's easy enough. But if I asked you to draw me an orbital diagram, you need to be careful here, right? It's 1s2, 2, or excuse me, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. If you drew this for me, where you put the second electron here instead of here, this would be incorrect, okay? So this is Hund's rule. For orbitals of the same energy, which means they're degenerate, you need to maximize, maximize the number of unpaired electrons. Maximize the number of unpaired electrons. So that means essentially every orbital needs to get one electron before you start pairing them up. So 2p2 should look like this. One electron in each of these orbitals, nitrogen, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, it looks like this. You put one electron in each p orbital before you start pairing them up. So then when you get to oxygen, now you have to start pairing them, them up because you don't have any more empty orbitals. So you get 1s2, 2s2, 2p4 with an orbital diagram that looks like this. Fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. This is what its orbital diagram looks like. And finally, neon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 
with an oral diagram that looks like this. All right, let's try a knowledge check question. Which of the following electron configurations represents silicon? Silicon is SI. All right, the correct answer is C. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. That is the correct electron configuration for silicon. All right, now let's talk about a condensed electron configuration. So sometimes I'm gonna ask you for what is called the full electron configuration, which is what we just looked at on the previous slide here. But sometimes I might ask you for the condensed electron configuration. So the conde condensed electron configuration is based upon this definition of core electrons versus valence electrons. Core electrons are the inner electrons with lower n values, whereas valence electrons are the outer shell or highest n electrons. So here, for example, something like sodium. Sodium's full electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So these 10 right here are the core electrons and this single electron right here is the valence electron. So to write the abbreviated or the condensed electron configuration for sodium or for any atom really, what you wanna do is you wanna go backwards in the periodic table. So start going backwards in the periodic table until you hit the nearest noble gas. And the noble gases are that final column. It's the 18th column, so helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, those are the noble gases. So go backwards in the periodic table until you hit the nearest noble gas. So if you're at sodium, which is number 11 in the periodic table, and you go backwards to number 10, that is the nearest noble gas. So helium is number 10. So helium's electron configuration is one, or excuse me, neon's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we can abbreviate that part using brackets N E. So you can bracket these 10 electron, or you can condense these electrons as bracket N E, and then just write the valence electrons. So sodium's condensed electron configuration would be bracket N E, which represents those core electrons, and then just three S1. So condensed electrons, con condensed electron configurations allow us to focus on valence electrons. All right, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but this is another version of the periodic table that shows you the valence electron configuration. So sodium we we're just talking about here is 3s1. Magnesium would be 3s2. So it's condensed electron configuration would be bracket Ne 3s2, since that's the nearest noble gas. If we were doing something like potassium, for example, you would do bracket AR 4s1, since argon is the nearest noble gas. Now you should notice some patterns in these electron configurations. There's a distinct pattern based upon the group that it's in, or ba essentially based upon the column that it's in. So group 1A, these are the alkali metals, so lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. You'll notice that they all essentially have one valence electron, so bracket HE, 2S1, bracket NE, 3S1. So the noble gas changes and the energy level changes, but they have a very similar pattern here where it's core electrons and then energy level S1. Or for group 2A, these are called alkaline earth metals, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, radium. It's very, very similar pattern where it's bracket for the core electrons, then the energy level, and then S2. So everything in the first column, they all have one valence electron. Everything in the second column, they all have two valence electrons, and they have very similar condensed electron configurations. Now there are a couple exceptions to the filling order. So there are more exceptions than this, but these are the only two exceptions that I'm going to expect you to know. The first exception occurs in the fourth column, or the I should say the, the, the fourth column of the periodic table, or the D block, excuse me, so chromium. Chromium is Z equals 24, so this is atomic number 24, and its condensed electron configuration is argon 4s1 3d5, not 4s2 3d4 as expected. So if you looked at chromium, you should have come up with an electron configuration of 4s2 3d4. That's what we would expect based upon the rules we just outlined, but it is actually 4s1 3d5. So the reason for that 
is that it is more stable, it is more energetically favorable for the D block to be completely, or these D orbitals to be completely half filled. So one electron here gets transferred from S to D, and so we get 4S1, 3D5. So chromium, and then underneath it, molybdenum, have this exception where an electron gets transferred from S to D. So where we would expect S2, D4, we actually get S1, D5. The other exception is pretty similar with copper, Z equals 29. We would expect copper to be 4S2, 3D9, but it is actually 4S1, 3D10, and that is because you get a greater stability with a completely filled 3D subshell. So an electron here gets transferred from S to D to completely fill up the 3D subshell. And then underneath copper is silver, which you uh, see a very similar pattern emerge. You would expect silver to be 5S2, 4D9, uh, but it is actually 5S1, 4D10. So these are the only two exceptions to the filling order that I will expect you to know on the exam. All right, now let's look at electron configuration of ions. So remember, to make an anion, we add electrons. So to make an anion using electron configurations, you simply add electrons using filling rules. So no tricks here. Now to make a cation, remember you have to take away electrons. Now be careful, you have to take away electrons from the highest n first. So first let's look at an anion example right here with chlorine. Uh, chlorine. Neutral chlorine has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Now chlorine, it often forms what's called a chloride anion. So this is a minus one anion. So chlorine gains one electron. So you should notice here that chlorine's got a space for one more electron in that 3p subshell. So the chloride electron configuration would simply be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. No tricks here, just add that extra electron based upon the filling rules. To make a cation, again, we take away electrons from the highest n first. So with something like sodium, this is pretty easy. Sodium's neutral configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now sodium, it likes to form a plus one cation. So you simply remove that 3s electron, remove that highest n electron. So Na pluses electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 3p6. Now where the cation rules get tricky are with transition metals. Be very careful with transition metals. For example, iron. Iron's condensed electron configuration is argon, 4s2, 3d6. So suppose I asked you for the electron configuration of argon plus two. What a lot of people on the exam will do is their answer they will give me will be argon, 4s2, 3d4. They will take away two electrons from 3d because the 3d electrons got filled second. This is wrong. To make a cation, you take away electrons from the highest n first. So Fe2 plus's electron configuration is argon 3d6. The 4s electrons are lost first. So even though they got filled first because they are a slightly lower energy, they are technically further away from the nucleus, so they also get lost first when forming a cation. So Fe2 plus's electron configuration is argon 3d6. It is not argon 4s2 3d4. Take away the electrons from the highest n first. All right, now let's check a question. What is the correct ground state electron configuration of P3 minus? So this is the phosphide anion. All right, the correct answer is C, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So neutral phosphorus is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. So here, phosphorus is gaining three electrons, and you should notice that it has an extra three spaces in that 3p subshell. So you just fill up the 3p subshell, and you get 3p6. All right, let's try one more knowledge check question. Which is the correct ground state electron configuration of Ca2+, the calcium 2 plus cation? All right, the correct answer is A, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 
Neutral calcium has this electron configuration right here. So to form the plus two cation, we simply remove these two electrons, which leaves us with A as our answer. Okay, that concludes section 3.4. I'll see you in the next video for section 3.5, periodic variations in element properties.